Hi, my name is Satwan and welcome to today's video where I'll be explaining how you can prevent or reduce the risk of having your business's payment processing accounts terminated by payment companies such as Stripe, PayPal and Square. I'll also explain what actions your business can take to ensure that customers can keep buying from you even in the event of an account termination. If you're new to the channel, Digital Money Lab helps businesses to increase sales conversions and cut payment processing costs by using the best payment systems and platforms for your needs. Make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video where I'll be providing you with a bonus piece of content which will help you to avoid the risks associated with account termination by Stripe, PayPal or Square. To avoid account termination, I think it's important to first understand why modern payment companies like Stripe have risen to such a dominant position in the first place. With the rise of the internet in the 2000s, companies like PayPal, Stripe and later Square appeared in the market to make it easier to pay for goods online. This made e-commerce much more convenient for both consumers and businesses. Companies like Stripe and Square in particular became hugely popular online because they made it so quick and easy for businesses to set up an account with them. It's possible to open an account and start selling online within a day. That's certainly something that I've done with, with my business and sometimes it's taken within an hour. Stripe's API technology enables almost any type of online software to be connected with their payment system, almost like a, a Lego kit. So using Stripe, selling appointments, for example, at a hairdressing salon through a scheduling tool like Calendly or through a website host like Wix or Squarespace can be done in just five to six steps within the settings page. And all of this can be done by somebody without any technical skills. On the customer side, the user experience to buy something has become as simple as using Apple Pay or Google Pay, which is simple to activate with Stripe and Square in particular. Being able to pay for things with a simple thumbprint increases sales conversions significantly because over 80% of web browsing is now done on a mobile device such as an iPhone. The convenience on both the business and the customer side is what has really propelled companies like Stripe to grow at an incredible rate and dominate the online payment space. But as often happens with any company that becomes as dominant as Stripe, Problems and challenges occur for businesses and sometimes with extremely negative consequences, which I'm going to go into detail now. If you think about a high-risk business today, the kind of products that probably come to mind are adult entertainment, gambling, selling guns, cannabis oil, multi-level marketing schemes to, to mention a few. These are perfectly legitimate businesses, but they can cause problems with payments for many reasons including fraud, legal grey areas and customer dissatisfaction leading to chargebacks. But in actual fact, almost 90% of businesses are technically classified as high risk in some way when you read the terms and conditions set out by companies like Stripe or Square. Let's take a look at the types of account that are at risk of termination. Companies that specialise in helping high risk businesses have determined that there are three types of account which represent a high risk for being shut down by Stripe. The first one is unauthorised and banned businesses. So some examples include adult entertainment, cannabis oil, gaming and gambling. These types of businesses should come as no surprise for termination, even though they're perfectly legal and legitimate. In my opinion, payment companies should not let their personal ethics affect the ability of a legitimate business to operate. However, that's not the world we live in and unfortunately you have to simply accept that unless you have millions of dollars to lobby politicians and, and get the rules changed. The second type of account at risk is e-commerce merchants with delivery verification. So there are all sorts of moving parts within an e-commerce business which involve stock, delivery, logistics, returns and customer satisfaction and if you just think of a, the massive effort required to run Amazon.com as an example you know what this means. And these types of accounts will need verification of identity and addresses to process payments. The third type of account at risk is a high-risk account. And this is where things can be vague because, as I said earlier, 90% of people who are selling online would be qualified as high-risk if you look at the terms and conditions of a payment provider. You could even start selling as a regular business, but later on be seen as a high-risk in future. So this makes it extra challenging. In addition to the three points I've just mentioned, the risk of you having your account terminated increases if your business does any of these three types of activity. The first one is selling digital goods. 
And with digital goods, you've often got no proof of delivery and, and no proof of quality either. Now, I, as I'm sure you have purchased a lot of digital products over time, and for me personally, although almost all of them have been exactly what I expected, occasionally some fell short of my expectations. And in my experience, I've always received 99% of the refunds that I've asked for. But admittedly, some companies were harder to deal with and, and finding their contact information than others. The second type of activity is a high risk industry. So that's something like um, a dating site or selling cannabis oil, uh, shipping and, and freight forwarding brokers, bankruptcy attorneys. There's, there's a whole list of high risk industries. And coming back to my examples, I've had to do a charge back twice. And they were both actually for ticketed events that were cancelled. And then the organisers disappeared without a trace. So events and ticketing is an area of, of high risk because that kind of thing is more likely to happen. And the third type of activity is simply if you're selling internationally in your business. This is a classic problem that I see all the time, which is that customers may not know where to go to get a refund from an overseas company. Customers may then file a chargeback out of frustration. Websites should always have contact numbers, complaints procedures and refund policies clearly displayed. There is no point in hiding this information because not only will you get burned with complaints and chargebacks, but complaints can now be made public through websites like Trustpilot, so there's no escape if a business is poorly run. As if the six points I've mentioned so far weren't enough, there are some more common scenarios which can get your account terminated. And the first one I'm going to mention is a relatively new phenomenon, and that is being cancelled. So on screen, this is one of the most famous examples of a company shutting down a business purely based on disagreeing with a certain viewpoint. So if you're just listening to the audio, the Trump organization was prevented from selling goods by Shopify based on their political agenda. And there are many other examples too, such as dating coaches having their payment processing shut down, natural health websites having their sites shut down for informing the public about the dangers of certain pharmaceutical products. The list is long and the com companies getting cancelled is long and expanding all the time because these are decisions based on a different view of the world. Banks and payment companies are deciding what is morally and ethically acceptable to buy and sell, and you need to be ready with a plan B if you do get cancelled. The thing which enables businesses to be cancelled in the first place is if a company like Stripe sees your business as an elevated risk. They can basically shut down your account without giving you any reason at all. Elevated risk is a very vague term, and probably deliberately so, and this is one of the most dangerous risks to your business, because... There's no way to argue with something that's so subjective. And it's no secret that many tech companies and the people that work within them are, are left-leaning in their politics. And this can cause huge problems when a decision is made to terminate an account when other members of society have a different worldview to the staff working at these payment companies. Next, let's look at admin risks. And sometimes the simplest things can get an account terminated or not even started in the first place. And some examples include simply filling out a form incorrectly can cause an account request to be declined with often no reason given by the pro payment processor. Another example is forgetting to add a link to the terms and conditions on your website. Another example is forgetting to add the extra URL that your business uses to sell items that you didn't tell Stripe about and that can be seen as misrepresentation. And when you get problems like this, there's no customer service number to call quickly at companies like Stripe if you find yourself in big trouble. And this makes it even more difficult to fix problems when they occur. So let's take a look at why are companies like Stripe so strict? One of the main reasons why they're so tough is because when you open a merchant account with them, it's not really a truly independent merchant account as if you would open one with a bank. Stripe actually offers businesses a sub-account which sits under their master merchant account. So in other words, companies like Stripe are third-party or aggregator services. And they're strict because they don't want their master merchant account shut down by banks and financial institutions. And as a result, chargeback ratios with, with payment aggregators like Stripe are tighter than with Visa and MasterCard. And therefore, Stripe needs to maintain low chargeback rates. Chargebacks cost an average of $25 each. That's what research shows. And companies like Stripe need to minimise them as much as possible because in their case, 
if even 0.1% of the transactions that they process on a daily basis have a chargeback, that can cost them $432,000 a day. So it's a significant amount of money and you can see why they need to be so tough. Let's look at some triggers for account termination, which might give you some context as to what's happening. So an example is customers claiming they've never purchased anything or there have been lots of complaints about a business in a short period of time. Another example or another couple of examples are variations to the norm. So this could include your sales varying. You might be doing sales of $5,000 a week and all of a sudden you get a big contract for 30 grand and now all of a sudden you're doing 35,000 that week. That's that's abnormal and the soft their algorithms will pick that up and could potentially trigger a, an account termination event. And another variation is chargeback variation. So you may have a certain number every month and it may only go up by a couple in a month and then that can be a trigger to having your account terminated. Digging a bit deeper into a high number of customer complaints, what's worse is if the sales volume of your business is low and the complaints are high, it's just not worth the hassle in Stripe's eyes to carry on dealing with your company. Another reason for high chargebacks is things like subscriptions, where people forget they subscribe to something. Dating sites have a problem with people who are underage who are joining under somebody else's payment details. In education, there's the challenge of products, anything from as low as $67 for a simple course, all the way up to a group mastermind, which might be thousands or tens of thousands of dollars and may take place over a weekend or, or a week. Another example is supplements, which could interact with medicines. And this can pose a reputational risk because although supplements are not regulated and, and medicines are, it's just still in Stripe's eyes a risk that they're better with, off without. And the last example is selling educational courses around products such as cryptocurrency and investing and making a quick buck. So this list of triggers which could force your account to be terminated is something to be aware of. And the reason is because of the consequences of termination. So when an account is terminated, there's two things that can happen. Your funds can be frozen because Stripe needs to have money to pay refunds, for example, if your customers are creating chargebacks and submitting complaints. And then your business could, could potentially be match listed on a database. And this is an extremely bad credit report situation for a business. And sometimes it's referred to as a terminated merchant file or a TMF. And being match listed basically means that securing a new merchant account is almost impossible. And you won't even be able to use alternative credit card processing solutions either. So how do we fix all these problems? There are many different ways to minimize or eliminate the risk of your Stripe account being shut down, which I'll go through now. There are simple changes you can make, and then there are highly recommended solutions, which I'll discuss towards the end. So let's start with the simple solutions. The first thing you can do is try and lodge an appeal with Stripe if your account is terminated. The problem with this is that often a business has no ability to sell anything when their main Stripe account has been shut down with no notice. So your business will need to be able to sustain a period of no sales if you want to go down this path. The next thing you can do is communicate for any unexpected changes early. For example, if you're running a marketing campaign that might be unexpectedly successful, tell Stripe beforehand so that they're aware of any unexpected peaks in demand. Next, use proper payment descriptors so that when customers look at their credit card bill, they know which company the transaction is for. Another great tip is to use a phone number as a location. And that way, if a customer doesn't recognize a transaction on their statement, they can ring a number which goes through to a sales team. This reduces chargebacks and complaints, which translates into better standing with Stripe over the long term. On the topic of sales, one change you could implement is simply not to sell subscriptions and instead sell more of a product up front instead as a one-off payment. This way, the customer doesn't have the headache of cancelling subscriptions in future, which they cannot ever remember signing up to in the first place. Next, ensure that your refund policy and contact information are clearly and easily displayed on your website. The most common reason for chargebacks is when a customer cannot get in touch with a company to return something or make a complaint. This is a simple problem to fix and should be implemented as quickly as possible on every website. Now let's move on to some more substantial solutions in terms of the actual payment systems themselves. So the next thing you can do is use an additional or alternative payment aggregator like PayPal or Square if you're using Stripe. The same risks apply, of course, 
But if you offer PayPal and one of either Stripe or Square, at least you have some way of continuing your business whilst you're trying to set up a new merchant account or resolve an account termination with Stripe. The most highly recommended solution should be to set up a dedicated merchant account. This will take anything from several days to a few weeks. However, once it is set up, it can either be used as a primary or a secondary account. Maybe use it as a backup account or put 20% of your business through that system. The next alternative solution or recommendation is to take advantage of cryptocurrency. So the number of cryptocurrency wallets is increasing exponentially every year and more countries are increasingly adopting Bitcoin as legal tender, such as the country of El Salvador. Payment solutions from companies such as BitPay allow you to quickly and easily integrate crypto payments into your website, often within a few minutes. You can then start accepting many different cryptocurrency tokens, not just Bitcoin. So to summarize on how you can avoid the situation of getting your account terminated or, or shut down by Stripe or any of the other payment aggregators, is simply to firstly not rely on one of them. Relying on one payment aggregator such as Stripe, Square or PayPal is a risk, even though they're extremely convenient to set up in the beginning. If your monthly revenue numbers are low, then these solutions are fantastic. But anything over a certain threshold, such as $50,000 a month in the US as an example, means you should look for a dedicated merchant account instead. Secondly, good communication is essential with both your payment providers such as Stripe and also with your customers as well. Stripe does not like huge variations or spikes in activity, so any advance warning you can give them will help you to maintain your account. But communication is essential with your customers as well. If they can't find your contact information to make a complaint or get a refund, then don't be surprised if your business suffers from high chargebacks. Thirdly, the best solution to these problems is to get a dedicated merchant account. It may take longer in the beginning, but once approved, it is highly unlikely to get terminated because of extra due diligence and checks required to get such an account. Fourthly, it would also be recommended to use an additional payment aggregator such as Square or PayPal on your website or as a backup. Even though all of them have strict rules, the odds of more than one account being closed at the same time are pretty low. The fifth and last recommendation is to offer a cryptocurrency payment option to customers from companies such as BitPay. BitPay can easily be integrated into websites such as Shopify and offers a completely alternative payment processing option for your customers and your business. As I mentioned earlier, I want to leave you with a bonus piece of content which will be a big help to you. In episode 47 of my podcast, The Payments Show, I interviewed Maria Sparigas, who is the founder and managing director of Direct Paynet. Direct Paynet helps high-risk businesses with payment processing capabilities. It was a fascinating and fun episode where we talked about everything from selling cannabis oil, adult entertainment, guns and more. She offers many insights into how she helps businesses avoid the problems I've discussed in this video and how to protect themselves from account termination in the future as well. If you'd like to listen to this episode, simply open a web browser and type thepayments.show into the address bar and click on episode 47. Alternatively, the direct link to the episode is in the description below. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to find a new payment solution for your company, please head over to digitalmoneylab.com where you'll be able to search for the ideal solution or get in touch with me directly. Thanks for listening and see you in the next video.